79 of Star Bearer. I'm Chris D.T. Gordon. It's fantastic to have you here with me today. And as always, Nate and Chris are sharing their just gifts of technological wizardry with me. You want them to work on your projects, let them know by reaching out to them at Nate Barron. Folks, it is the middle of fall. We have so much to look forward to, depending on where you live in the United States or abroad, of the weather. But you know what is still always not changing? Students need help with dealing with tough issues. And I am here to do that. So if you know of any schools or, or organizations that could benefit from the attitude of gratitude, bag, please reach out to me at Chris at ChrisPTGord.com or with my website, ChrisPTGord.com. Well, today I am joined by my new friend, Dr. Joe Rinaldi, or as we jokingly call him, El Conquistador. Hey, Joe, how are you doing today? Chris, I'm doing amazing. It is so good to be here, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. As am I. You know, I found you on the fraternity footy, the footy, talking with our, our mutual friend, uh, Mike Eilon, and I, read, I watched your story, and I said, this guy has to be on my show. You have, you're, you're experiencing something that very few people do, but your attitude about it is what we really wrong drew me to your story because, but like my story, anyone can look at my situation and say, oh man, that sucks. Oh, too bad. You must feel awful. But here I am making myself, making cosplay uses out of my situation. And you also are turning your situation into the most positive thing it can be. So please share your story. Sure. Yeah. So I am currently 27 years old and I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with my wife, Michaela, and we are both doctors of physical therapy. But to rewind to where my story really started, we'd have to go back 17 years to when I was 10 years old. And I woke up one morning and just couldn't see out of my right eye. It wasn't something I was prepared for. wasn't something I was expecting. I, I knew nothing about the fact that I had a condition called Best Disease. Best Disease is a juvenile form of macular degeneration. And so for people who don't know what that is, essentially I am progressively losing my central eyesight and there's nothing that I can do about it. And so as a child, 10 years old, being given this news, I was taken back and really not sure how to process any of that. And so I spent a lot of my childhood feeling very confused about who I was, what I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to do, what excuses I was supposed to make, if any. And so I spent a lot of my time figuring out how I was supposed to interact with the world around me. And most of my childhood, I felt uh, a lack of confidence. Um, I felt alone. I felt like it was hard for me to connect with other people because I was struggling with something that nobody else could see. And yeah. so th that I stayed... Remember. Yeah. And, and that was really challenging. And it stayed with me like that throughout high school and college. And so for most of my life, uh, best disease has been a burden for me. However, when I was getting ready to go to graduate school, which was in 2016, I had about two weeks before our program started, I was going to move from New Jersey to Philadelphia and embark on this journey to get my doctorate degree. And two weeks before that happened, I lost a significant portion of my eyesight and I began to second guess whether or not it was a good idea to move to a new city and take out student loans and pursue something that I might not be able to finish. And I am so grateful that my parents were there to change my mindset and help me see things from a different perspective. I was so worried about all the what ifs. I was worried about what if I go blind? What if I can't finish school? What if I can't do X, Y, and Z? And they helped me see things from the lens of even if, even if I go blind, even if I can't read or write or drive like everybody else, I will figure it out when that happens or if that happens. Okay, and I, I just have you right there. That is mind blowing. Just changing the word what into even, because even allows us that ability to not, 
I mean, I want to say accept in the way you are, but you are taking into account that situation is happening, mm. and then you're still moving forward. It's it's like a, it's like a declaration of response. You say, well, all right, this happened. Now what? Yeah, I think that's. Huge. That's such a great insight, Chris. And I think it's really on top of that, you're taking ownership of what you can control even before it, it gets to that point. And that was the attitude that I went into PT school with. And even with that attitude, the first year of school was the, the hardest year of my life, hands down, the hardest, darkest season of life. And uh, I was so used to being able to put in more effort toward things, whether that was sport or school or relationships and get better at those things. But for that entire first year, no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't make myself feel any better. And I think the most interesting part was on the outside, I looked like I had it all together. I was the kid getting straight A's in a doctorate program, sitting in the front of class, making friends, laughing, smiling with everybody. And on the inside, I was just falling apart and nobody could see that. And I was the only person who knew. So that was really, really challenging. And what I would say is the point that it all changed for me was when I started spending time with the girl that I had just this huge crush on. And it was an interesting uh, season. It makes you feel better when we spend time with people. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And right. And so I just started spending more and more time with her. I started feeling better and better about myself. And before I knew it, I felt like I was back to normal and I wasn't really worried so much about what was going on with my eyes because I had this other person that I cared so much about. And it got to this point with this girl uh, where I realized I wanted to marry her. And there was just no doubt in my mind. And it was at that moment where I realized that life was so much bigger than just me. And that everything that I felt, everything that I acted out into the world was going to affect not only me, but now her in a very deep and intimate way and everybody else around me. And so it was at that moment that I felt a sense of ownership to change the way that I felt about my condition. And so at that moment, it went from a burden to an absolute blessing. And I know that's a weird thing for probably a lot of people to hear that I'm grateful to be going blind. But it's absolutely true because it's given me a perspective on life that I would not have otherwise. And the unrelenting struggle that I live with every single day has been a source of immense and ongoing strength. And, yeah. uh, and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, I, and you know, I, I can really resonate with that personally because when I went through my situation, you know, a, huge, a huge mental block I had to get over early was, okay, what am I gonna? What kind of husband and father am I gonna be to my my kids? And you know, and you know, I'm gonna look like a discount dead to me. You know, so I was like, you can respond to that. Well, you know, she has responded like a champ, and she made me feel better about the situation. And if, as long as I have her in my corner and my kids in my corner, you know. Anyone else can say what they want. You know, in fact, uh, I do get looks still when I go to school. And uh, kids are like, staring at me. I just tell them, don't go near the school. <laughs> take that, you know, take that for what you want. But, you know, going back to you, I think that is, that's remarkable that she's able to, you know, to take that on herself and say, you know what, this is going to be a struggle. We're going to take it as it comes, and we're just going to do the best. You know, we're going to accept, do the best, but we're going to excel. I yeah. think that's what I'm getting from you, that Michaela's, you know, said, well, we're not, I'm not settling here. Mm. So this, this is us taking the challenge on and overcoming it and really rocking. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, Chris, it looks like from the looks of this Zoom call that you're in pretty good shape. And I am an exercise fanatic. Anybody who knows me would, would be able to tell you that. And I look at the mental and emotional struggles that some, someone like you and I go through a lot like the struggle that somebody would go through in the weight room. You know, if you 
go to the gym at all and you're doing things that are super, super easy, your body's not going to adapt and get stronger and grow. And it's the same in life to me, honestly, if somebody were to just have the easiest life that you can imagine, I think that character would probably be pretty low. Resilience would probably be pretty low. You know, you can go, the list goes on and on. But to me, that struggle, that mental and emotional struggle is a really great opportunity to actually find strength and get stronger and to grow against that resistance. And I just couldn't imagine life any other way. And I think the saddest life I could imagine is probably one without any struggle at all. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I again, I resonate with this Joe because I find that through my ordeal, I've been able to benefit others' lives with my story and my message. And had I been just some normal guy who scraped his hand on the ball and nothing happened because of it, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'd be a horrible person, but I wouldn't be able to benefit people as much as I am. Yeah, that so makes I, complete I, sense. I agree, you know, struggle, you know, like, like working out, like the weight training, you know, the, it's the stress that makes the muscle strong. Exactly. And then I would also say on top of that, something that's been really interesting for me and, and on my mind recently, as I just got my first tattoo uh, a couple of days ago here. I I, yeah. Yeah. And I, so I got for anybody listening, I got a sprout, uh, no, like a plant coming up before from the thumb side of my left wrist. And that represents is really my favorite concept and just an absolute truth. So there's a quote by Christine Kane, and she said, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but you've actually been planted. And I've been through many dark seasons of life, um, periods of uncertainty, periods of hopelessness, periods of real true struggle. And it doesn't feel good when it's happening. But I've just come to see over and over and over again that some of the darkest, hardest times of my life have led to some of the, the best growth and the best things I could possibly imagine. And the hard part for me is when you're in those seasons that are really, really tough, you don't see where it's going. You don't get to understand why it's happening in that moment, but it's that trust and that faith and that perspective that you get to choose to say, I've been planted, I'm not buried. And, uh, and I think that's just so paramount in my life that I couldn't imagine my life without, without that concept uh, every single day. That's beautiful. And I think that that is something that definitely should be shared because it is true. I mean, I can think of so many people who have just struggled and they don't, they, by their own admission, don't understand or haven't seen where they're going to come out on the other side. But when they do, if you know they, they're skyrocketing, they're heading toward that sun, and you know, stronger than ever. Yeah. Yeah. And there's this also this really interesting concept that I read in a book by Ryan Holiday. And uh, the concept was a, is really just a phrase, memento mori, which really just alludes to the temporary nature of life and how everything is, is so short. If you look at things on a big scale, you know, we're on this, uh, this little marble that's hurling through time and space and, you know, snap your fingers a thousand years from now, nobody's going to remember who you or I were. Maybe, maybe somebody's, you know what, if you're in the year 3021 listening to this podcast, then that's incredible, but um, odds are probably not. And I think yeah. that just gives me some relief when I feel really anxious or worried about small things uh, is just, you know, life is really so short that these small things really aren't worth our worry. Yeah, exactly. And also if you are listening to us in the year 2021 and you have time machines and a jet and a jet pack, come back to 2021, drop out that jet pack. Oh, Hey, there's someone at the door. Awesome. <laughs> just like a cheese. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah, letting the small things, you know, not, not become big things. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's kind of funny you say it because I look at small things in a slightly different way. I find small things to be what we take our daily growth to joy from. Hmm. And have you found that as well, Joe, that, you know, the, you know, the, the seemingly insignificant parts of our lives really... 
Yeah, you know? ab absolutely, Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, there, so, what? Oh, no, I was just going to, there's this great uh, speech that I really love and I'll share it with people when I feel like it's a good fit. But this uh, high school valedictorian gave a speech called the 16th second. And uh, without giving the entire thing away, the, the gist of his speech is that he was named valedictorian. He had sacrificed and worked for it all four years of high school. And he was elated and excited and on top of the world for 15 seconds. And then the 16th second came and he said, well, now what? And he realized that he had sacrificed so many of those small little moments and friendships and, and relationships with people throughout those four years, all for these 15 seconds of being on top of the world. And then now what? And I just thought it was so powerful. And to what you're saying, you know, those small moments really are the moments that matter the most to me, at least. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. So what kind of project are you working on right now? Sure. So I left my full-time job as a physical therapist at an outpatient clinic here in Philadelphia about three months ago. And I still work uh, very, very part-time at a clinic here in Philadelphia to keep my skills sharp. But most of what I'm doing is related to my business, Project Endure. So the Endure stands for endurance. And really the mission of Project Endure is to help people uh, find strength in their struggle and to practice positive perspective and persistence because life is a marathon, not a sprint. Some people might even argue it's a series of marathons, but you know, however you see it, it's, it's, a long, it's a long game. And so I wanna help people be resilient in the long haul and, uh, and find something that they're passionate about pursuing. So a lot of what I do is online coaching with individuals who either wanna get more fit and healthy in the gym or you know, training for races, but more so people who really just want to figure out who they are and who they want to be and then how to get there. And so it's a lot of uh, mindset work and coaching and conversations. And I really, truly enjoy that. And then the other half of Project Endure is really this concept of doing hard things together. So I created the Hard Things Club, which is a virtual club and group of people who pursue monthly challenges. And so the first ever challenge was a cold shower challenge where everybody in the group was challenged to take a two minute cold shower every single day for the month of September. And we had about 41 people complete that challenge. And then this month for October, we're doing push-ups. And so far we have about 119 people in that challenge. And the community's just been so great and getting to watch other people support one another and lift uh, one another up has been really, really cool. And uh, that's really what I'm working on now. That's fantastic. So how many people are still taking those cold showers? <laughs> that's a great question. The last time I checked in, probably about 15 or so. So that's we had that's, yeah, that's, 30, 33%. Well, 41, that, that's, uh, you know, over a third. Yeah, yeah. So, and I get it, you know, cold showers are very uncomfortable. So that was a tough one to start out with. But the idea is that we're doing hard things together and intentionally seeking out discomfort uh, to build that habit of doing hard things. Because, you know, at one point or another, life's going to hand us all really hard things, just like it has for you, just like it has for me. And they're going to take different shapes and forms. And we don't know when those things are coming or how many of those things are coming. But I think if we can get into the mindset of being able to step into an uncomfortable situation or do things that we don't feel like, when the big thing comes, those habits will be built and uh, we can show up better in that moment, both for ourselves and for the people we care about. So it's really about building resilience uh, on a daily basis uh, for what yeah. I do. I love that. Now, is the uh, Hard Things Club online or is that something you guys do with Philly? So currently it's online. So it's a Facebook group and uh, I can definitely send you the link, Chris, and anybody else who's interested, but eventually I'd look to move it to kind of its own platform, whether that's a, a web-based platform or something that you can download on your phone. But for now, we just uh, congregate online on Facebook and uh, we have some good resources in there, some community conversations, some Zoom calls, and it's a good time for anybody looking to surround themselves with people who are just striving to be better. That's great. No, I was just thinking about a shirt I have. I'm not sure if you ever heard of Ragnar, the Relay mm -hmm. Road Race. It's basically where a group of people, usually it's 12 people, sometimes it's six for ultra runner, they will run 200 miles. Oof. 
and everyone does three legs. And in 2019, the shirt said, it's not crazy if we do it, if we all do it together. <laughs> and so I was just thinking of that. That should be a shirt for the heart beat. That is really, really great. I love that, Chris. And actually, it brings me to a, a topic that I've been talking a lot about with people in my circle, which is the idea that when someone like you or I does something crazy, right, to society, whether it's you persisting in your mission through a pandemic, um, you know, despite a bunch of barriers and obstacles, people might look at that and say, wow, Chris is crazy. Or they might look at me and think, Joe's taking cold showers, like he is crazy. And one of my friends created a brand called Go Crazy. And the whole concept is that, that yeah, if, if, uh, if doing hard things and pursuing the best version of myself is crazy, then yeah, go crazy. I want you to like, I want to be crazy because I think a lot of times we uh, get sucked into what the quote unquote normal is. And when we diverge from what normal is, you can feel a little bit lonely sometimes, or, you know, you can get labeled differently. But if you really look at what quote unquote normal is, it's probably somebody who works a desk job they're not happy with, who's slightly out of shape and has a, a bunch of other problems. So if crazy is, uh, is what I'm doing and what you're doing, then I would love to be called crazy, you know? Exactly. So uh, going back a bit to what you said about people who haven't had a struggle, they, you know, they, 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 they really struggle when hard times come. I think about Facebook and mm. how the people who have gone through the hardest struggle are usually the most inspirational posters. They're the ones putting up, you know, hey, look what I did. You could do it too. They're, and they're putting up really motivating material. Whereas those the others who shy away from both situations or they bemoan them. They're mm. the next man. Yeah. Complaining I, about, you know, the snow or, you know, whatever, who, you know, someone, something someone said. And, and so it, it all comes down to your mindset. There's something I like to say where your thoughts go, your mind and body will follow. I absolutely love and agree with that, Chris. I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's really interesting too, that what we think of really influences the rest of our life. And it starts in our mind between our ears with that conversation we have every single day. And that's one of the reasons I love doing hard things, whether it's cold showers, uh, endurance sport, going to the gym, getting up super early, because you get to meet that other person deep down inside of you who can do a little bit more, who could give a little bit more, who could be a little bit more. And when you're on mile 10 of a really hard run, or you're about to step into a cold shower, or you're just debating whether or not to snooze your alarm, it's a conversation between the weaker version of you and the stronger version of you. And the beautiful thing is that we get to choose which one we're going to be each time that hard decision comes. And the more we can choose that other person who could do more, be more and give more, we become that person, but it all starts up in our mind. And uh, it's a really hard battle to fight. I'll give you that. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of the allure though. You know, if it were, like you said, if it were easy, everyone, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. There's this great quote about the extra mile. Uh, I'm going to butcher it. So I'll just paraphrase, but right. uh, you know, you know, the quote goes something like this. Everyone says they go the extra mile, but almost no one actually does because when they get there, they stop and look around and think, wait, nobody else is here. Why am I doing this? And they turn around and they leave never to come back. That's why the extra mile is such a lonely place, but that's also why the extra mile is a place filled with opportunity. And uh, I think it's so true because when you go above and beyond and uh, you strive for greatness in whatever it is that you do and whatever it is that that looks like, it might be being the best husband you could be. It might be being the best father. It might be being the best athlete or teacher or whatever it is. Um, when you strive for greatness and you go that extra level, not a lot of other people are there with you and that could make you second guess. And I think that's a, it's an interesting place to be for a lot of people. I know I've been there. Uh, especially during college, I was living a different life than everybody else. And I'm sure you've experienced that as well, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree that it's, you know, they say it's lonely at the top or they, you know, it's, what is it? 
another one I heard. I'm going to put this one as well, but you know, uh, you know, it, uh, it's not crowded where the meters are or something. I, I know I heard it on uh, a podcast that was our, a daily video cast that was called Jared Daily okay. uh, with Darren Hardy. So he, he offers those gems occasionally. So I, but I fully agree with you that it separates the beach from the chat. Yeah. So if someone wants to reach out to you, Joe, and find out about the uh, Hard Things Club or any of the other endeavors you're, you're pursuing, where can they find you? Sure. So Instagram is the best place to find me. From there, you can find everything else about me, blog, podcast, newsletter, YouTube, et cetera. My Instagram handle is at Joe A. Rinaldi. And uh, if you reach out to me there, literally anybody, if you're listening to this and you think, ah, he's not going to respond, I promise I will. And I would love to connect with anybody who wanted to reach out. I'm, I'm looking through, folks. I reached out to Joe and he responded right away without, you know, without even saying who this. So I appreciate it. And, and Joe, if you can leave our audience with one nugget of wisdom, I know you dropped a lot today, but, you know, say if they're facing something that's a little above their pay grade or so they think, what is something that you could offer them to help them through that difficult endeavor? Yeah, I, I think I already shared my biggest piece of advice, which just to repeat is, uh, is the fact that you're, you're planted, not buried when you're in a dark place and you have to trust that. But I'll share a, a quick story. It's, uh, you know, it's an interesting fact um, that not a lot of people know, and there's a lesson in there. So in Colorado, it's a very flat place, right? I'm from the East Coast. So I've, I've only passed over Colorado in a plane, but it's a very flat, flat place. And there's a mountain range that goes, you know, through it. So there's a ridge line, and that creates a lot of storms. And so Colorado is also unique in the fact that it's one of the only places in the, in the world, really, where buffalo and cows are in close proximity. And so when the storms roll over the mountain ranges and come toward the cows, the cows turn away from the storm and run away from the storm. And what happens is the storm eventually catches up to them and they're running in the same direction as the storm. And so the rain is falling on them for actually a longer period of time, even compared to if they just stayed still. When the buffalo see a storm coming, they turn and face the storm and run directly into it. And what ends up happening is because they're moving in an opposite direction as a the storm, they're actually in the storm for less time. And the takeaway for me there is when you're facing something hard in life, it's not worth running from because eventually it's going to catch you and it's not going to be pretty. So if you're facing something hard, if it's a difficult conversation or something challenging in your life that you need to face, turn around and face it sooner rather than later. Of course, it has to make sense for you at that time, but, uh, but you, you have to face it because uh, the sooner you do, the sooner it'll be past you and the stronger and better you'll be for it. That's I never knew that about buffalo and cows. That's crazy. So you're to hear, folks. Be a buffalo. You should have that. You should make a t-shirt. <laughs> I it's should. There. That's a great idea. You'll get the first one, Chris. Sounds good. Thanks. Well, Joe, it's been an honor and a privilege to talk with you. I absolutely have loved the conversation. And I, and I know that the audience as well. Thank you so much for not only sharing your nuggets of wisdom, but also your story and your bravery. You know, let's not discount it. This is a brave thing to face. You are one great buffalo. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate it. And I'm just so grateful to have had this opportunity. So thank you again. My pleasure. So folks, please reach out to Joe. He has so much to offer with his story and his message. And who knows, if you are a fellow crazy person, maybe you can join him and do some hard things. Again, if you know of any uh, young adults, college students, high school students, members of the military, whatever, who could benefit from Joe's message or my message of the Edge of Gratitude, please check out ChrisDPGord.com. Reach out to me at Chris at ChrisDPGord.com. Also, please like, subscribe, share this message. Joe's message needs to be heard. So please share, like, all those good things. And folks, I have to ask Joe one more question. Joe, what is your favorite dinosaur? 
I'm going to have to go with uh, Triceratops. And I have no other reason for that than it was my favorite as a child. And it's remained in the number one position. You know, that's good. That's, that's good that you pick one and you're stuck with it. I know some people, they like Koki Rex, which is cool. And, you know, some people like the little hands. But, you know, good for you for being stalwart. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. All right. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Please have a great day. Remember to pass on perfection and go for greatness.